Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well today, a storm is brewing! There's a big storm coming and it's a hurricane to see from Armour Hobby. The new, brand new, just arrived, 148 scale kit. But this one is a special one because it's got the options directly from Armour. It's got the optional resin extras, it's got resin added gun barrels for the Hispano cannons and it has got the resin exhaust stubs as well. Not readily available in the shops. Now we'll get into the review in a minute, just want to talk about hurricanes generally and my journey with hurricanes if you like. Um, so I'm actually going to pop that just off to the side for a second um, so we don't get too distracted. My journey with hurricanes started with Obviously, with our good friend Matchbox back in 1972, and here is the very the very same model, the 2C Hurricane. Um, now, I was absolutely smitten when I first saw this. I've got to say, um, not least because, of course, of the absolutely genius artwork that we have here from Roy Huxley, where they're actually shooting up. It's a night fighter attack of hurricanes, and they're shooting up the Carpi K airfield uh, at Carn in Normandy. Um, and I think we'll, we'll talk about this a bit later when we look at the new kit because I think they're actually pretty much looks like they're depicting almost the same scene uh, albeit that the, the one that they've depicted has got drop tanks but pretty much I think they've got the inspiration from this very piece of artwork and of course this, this particular one that's in my hand is the actual 1972 Mark I box it has no window on the back and I'm sure lots of you will have seen this, built this and remember it very very well uh, and there was also a normal day fighter version uh, and of course this, this variant was basically used for for ground attack because of its cannons and ability to carry bombs uh, I, won't, I won't do a complete re-review of the matchbox kit other than just to remind you uh, there were some issues with it we have the finished product right here which I'll zoom out uh, we've got the finished product right here and there were some issues with it, as I say, um, and you'll see them. I mean, this is not a... Don't, be, don't judge me by the paint job and the finishing of this. It was just thrown together to be matchbox-like, deliberately. But look at, the, uh, look at the wings. This is the uh, 1972 uh, matchbox. And if you look at those wings, it looks awful like a Spitfire at this angle, doesn't it? It's got dihedral, which, of course, of course, the Hurricane does not have. It looks exactly like a Spitfire, those wings. Instead of being a straight wing, it's got some dihedral, which is not... Not good, not good. Also, the shape at the front isn't right. Again, looks awfully like a Spitfire, the cowl area where the engine is. Uh, not actually Matchbox's finest hour, but, but that all said, uh, true to form, it went together beautifully and it had the cannons on it, so it looked really quite sexy. So none of us were very bothered about this back in 72. Some of you, even some very famous modellers, we're too young to remember that, but anyway, we'll move on. So that's the uh, the lovely matchbox. So that's where I first saw the 2C. Um, and then, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Ravel did one later on as well, which wasn't quite recently, that wasn't great, to be honest. Going away from the 2C model, we've also got the Italeri reboxed under the Tamiya name. Not, not a good proposition. I thought I was buying a Tamiya when I bought this. <laughs> we all make mistakes, don't we, with these kits when they do a bit of badge engineering, but in fairness to them, they did, they did say uh, Tamiyar in association with Italeri or worse to that effect. Now this is not a great one, and people say it's a nice kit. No, it isn't really. It's not, not terrible, but look at this. Uh, again, I haven't done a, a splendid job of this one, so try not to chuckle too much. The expert master models amongst you. Here you can see they've got this stupid insert area behind where the gun, um, the 303 Browning machine guns go. It's like a, a plug-in section for reasons completely unclear, gives you a load of problems and I didn't bother to make a whole lot of effort, if we're honest, with actually correcting that. But you've got this strange sort of panel and it just gives you a problem in the most visible place. You can see it there, can't you? So you end up with a, a bad join and, and even worse, and you should be able to see this, look at the windscreen. I mean, this, this windscreen didn't even match the shape of the, the fuselage, you know. Uh, so it is not a very nice kit, actually. Much overrated, in my opinion, this particular one. Uh, Tamiyar were not wise to put their name anywhere near this Italiari product, because it is, it is an Italiari mould. So 
yes, I've got a, you know, again, people look at it that don't know any better and say, wow, that's a nice hurricane, night fighter hurricane. Well, it's actually not night fighter, it's just that Battle of, Breen, Battle of Britain, uh, what do they call it? There's a, there's a name for it, I forgot the nickname they gave it. It's like it's day and night scheme. I, I think it was to try and differentiate um, from the German aircraft in the sky for the for the Royal Observer Corps when they were trying to spot where, where the enemy was, you know. But yeah, from a distance, from the three foot rule, it looks really quite nice, but up close, not a great model. So, we've been crying out for something new. Now, I did a review oh, three years ago, two years ago, three years ago, at least try, about two, two years or so ago, of the Armour 172nd scale Hurricane, and it was an absolute peach. So naturally everybody has been waiting with great expectation for the new kit to come out. So I'm just going to get a little bit more light here. There we go. Uh, and before I go any further, I'm going to, as we're, as we're having a nice uh, chat this evening, I thought it was very reasonable to have a little glass of red. I don't drink this all day, by the way, <laughs> contrary to what some of you think. Uh, and this is one of my favourites that you'll, some of you will remember. This is the Gentleman's Relish, or to be more specific, uh, an accurate a gentleman's collection Cabernet Sauvignon from Lindemans so it's a, it's a fairly readily available you know, certainly in the UK you can get it from places like Morrison's and others uh, and it's a very rich full-bodied wine but yes it's quite strong it's quite in a good way it's a great wine that for a, a cold winter's night when you've got a bit of cheese and biscuits or some red meat um, or even a bit of smoked fish, I think it goes with it quite well, surprisingly. Anyway, moving on. This is not a drinking channel, this is a modelling channel, and we are going to show you the latest and hopefully the greatest. So let's start by having a look at the box and bring you in. I'm a hobby in Poland, our good friends over there, and let's hope this is something similar to what we had in that 76 scale beauty of a kit. So, kit number 4004. Sorry. It's actually 40,004, isn't it, technically speaking? Four, treble zero four. Um, contains plastic kit, decals and masks. So we're going to get some masks in it. On the side, we get, um, contains a plastic model airplane kit. Decals for three versions and masks. Well, we actually get more than that, as you'll see in a moment. Um, now, I should also add, other people have easily beaten me to the drawer on this, but I was waiting for this particular version because this has got this is the special option directly from Armour. And those of you who have not seen the kit or not bought it yet or ordered it should pin your ears back and have a listen to this. So this has come out at an incredibly competitive price by ordering direct from Armour in Poland. Um, now a modelling friend and myself clubbed together to get the offer was you get two of everything, two kits. And if you do this, you get the resin cannons, the Hispano cannons, and you get the resin exhaust stubs, which are much nicer than the kit ones. Um, and they did, they did a deal where it comes out at an incredible price of £38. £38. Which, frankly, is an absolute no-brainer, if you think about it. You're getting all these extras. I doubt you'll find a price in the UK anywhere that's going to get even close to that, especially for the extras that are involved. Uh, if indeed <clears throat> you can get those extras. So I just wanted to say, uh, have a look at Armour's website. Um, I've no idea whether this is still, uh, stock is available or not with these extras, but um, Armour are selling direct. I'm not trying to cut out the, re the retailer here. I'm not trying to, I don't advocate that. Um, I mean, I know that a lot of big, big companies like Airfix now sell direct. And I'm a bit uncomfortable with this really in a way, but, but when they're offering something that you can't buy over the counter anyway, then it's kind of a no brainer, isn't it? Uh, I think if it was a regular kit, I'd, I'd try and support the local retailer wherever they may be in each country, you know, your, your local model shops, etc. But but if you want to get something a bit special, I think Armour were quite clever in saying, well, if you come to us directly, we'll give you these extras. And it's like, you know, it's kind of what's not to like sort of thing. But anyway, let's have a look. On the back, strangely, they've gone from portrait, uh, sorry, from landscape to portrait in terms of the actual design. But we won't complain about that because they, they do it rather well. So here we go. It's showing you the three schemes. Almost matchbox like this, isn't it? Um, it says the Night Intruder. Uh, and this is RAF Tangmere. Tangmere, of course, is close to Duxford. 1942. And oh, it's a Polish pilot. Here we go. Now, now it's all clear. Polish pirate Karel Kutlwasza. 
couple vasher. That sound. What does that mean? Sounds like fish washer or something. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. And then the second option uh, is Stanford Tuck, the famous British fighter ace. Now he's he's got a great backstory. One of these days I might. One of these days, a lot of you know that I like to do these historical talks. I think one thing I might do in the not too distant future is I might do a historical talk about famous fighter races. Or maybe talk about Douglas Bader. But Stanford Tuck's got a particularly interesting story because he was he was shot down several times and once he was actually taken prisoner of war. Halfway through the war, I think it's 42, 43, he was taken prisoner of war and he ended up in a prison camp for about 18 months, two years. Uh, but he escaped and he, he, I think he used the French resistance. Uh, possibly also the Spanish, and he got out and got back to the UK. He was quite a boy, but anyway, that's for another day. We'll talk about that one day. So FMA, that's Stanford Tuck's aircraft. Um, yeah, you got the DSO and two bars. There you go. That tells you he was an ace. And then we've got. Um, mm, 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 doesn't say the pilot's name. Three hundred nine squadron, which I think was also yeah, I was Polish because it's got the Polish uh, flag on it here. Look. So there you go, so you've got two Polish pilots and Stanford Tuck, so that's quite a nice, that's quite an understandable, from a marketing point of view, way of going about it from, from Armour's point of view. But without further ado, why don't we take a look at the product and see what we've got. I'll do the crease on mine, you've noticed. Uh, it has just been uh, quite a lot of posts. Oh, now I've not had an Armour hobby like this before. It's got like a slide out drawer, that's quite cool, isn't it? Alright, I'll pop that there. To the flags. I haven't got the Polish flag. I'm sure I've got it on order, but it hasn't arrived yet. I'm not sure where that is. I've got a couple. I've got the Italian flag not come either. But all in good time, folks. All in good time. Oh, we've got an artwork. Hey, look at this. That's cool. And this is what I was saying. If you look very closely, it's actually attack. It's very hard to see probably with this light as well. But it's actually attacking an airfield. It's a strike on a German airfield. And now it looks like carpet cake to me. It's even got similar shaped hangers than the the matchbox artwork's got. But that's nice, isn't it? And it says, uh, yeah, Karol Kutelwascher is uh, striking the Germans on the ground there. So we'll put that safely back in there. I think I'll just move that, those boxes aside. So we're not going to have them in the way, causing focus trouble. Oops. Sorry about that. There we go. Now then, one bag. And then we have our instructions. And I think we're going to get Nice decals. Oh, it looks like there might be a amendment sheet or something. Right. Okay, I think we'll I think we'll have a read of this, if you don't mind, I'll wind you back. And actually while you're working, we will have that artwork. We'll, we'll have the box there in the background, it's only fair, isn't it really? For armor's day of glory. <laughs> let's let's have a read of what they say then about the 2C. Hawk Hurricane 2 was developed after the first combat experience gained in the battles over France. It quickly showed the main weakness of this version of the fighter, which was mainly in its armament. Sidney Cam's design team, he was the chief designer at Hawkers, set itself to improve the plane's performance and air armament effectiveness, and on June 11, 1940, this prototype of the Mark II was flown with the Rolls-Royce Merlin 20 engine with a two-stage compressor. With its engine, the Hurricane reached a speed of 342 miles per hour, 550 k's. First production Hurricane 2s went into production in September 1940 and the second stage of modernisation was to improve its firepower by increasing the number of machine guns to 12, resulting in the appearance of the Mark IIb version. So it had six guns on each wing, wow, OK. Uh, at the same time... It, Work was carried out on adapting the wing insulation to the 20mm Hispano Suiza HS.404 cannons. Cannon arm version, na na then named the Mark IIc C for cannon, appeared in units like 257 Squadron in the Royal Air Force in March 1941. And it was produced without major changes until July 44. Three years, that's amazing. Especially at that time, because things changed quickly, you know. Uh, a total of 4,711 Mark IIc machines were produced, serving on almost all the fronts during the Second World War. This aircraft, designed as an interceptor, was adapted into a, a fighter a fighter based on carriers, an attack aircraft and a light bomber. It lasted the longest in its first time units in the later role. Yeah, okay. The Mark IIc version became 
the starting point for the Mark II D anti-tank version, which was equipped with two 40mm Vickers S cannons, and the Mark IV, a specialist assault version that could carry rockets and bombs. Well, they used those in Normandy, didn't they, before the typhoons really took over from them. Uh, a tropi a tropicalised version was also used outside the ETO, European, to European Theatre of Operations, and was equipped with a distinctive dust filter under the chin. The pilots of the Polish Air Force met, met the Hurricane 2C as early as the autumn of 41, during exchange postings in the No. 87 Squadron in 1943. Single examples were sent to No. 318 Fighter Reconnaissance Squadron, and in April 44, the entire Polish 309 squadron was equipped with this type and offer, operated from airfields in Scotland on patrol duty. <laughs> in other words, they went out shooting up uh, Nazi shipping in, near Norway and surrounding areas, Denmark. That'll be their mission. I can, you can imagine they would be very effective. Right, well that's great. Let's, let's assume you know, let's have a proper look at this. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do before we actually get into the proper instructions. Let's let's start as I always do with the decals, um, and we've got some errata. There's an there's an update message there uh, for errors on the instructions. Oh, that's nice. It's got that very gentle, like the old school kits, just a slight adhesion, just a very gentle adhesion, so that it it stays on your decals, the backing sheet, uh, the cover sheet, I should say. Let's have a look at these. Now, I'm a hobby. I think their decals are really rather nice. I think, I don't know for sure, I think they're done for them by Tech Mod, also in Poland. So let's have a look. You can see we've got here an absolute minimum carrier film around, around them. Um, the only problematic, or potentially problematic, carrier film is on those, the main registration letters there. You can see it, can't you? You can see that? Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. You might just want to go in there with a blade and just remove a little bit of that carrier film to stop any silvering trouble. Same over here, he says. Get the light on it. There we are. There, you can see it, can't you? But yes, very nice. Got the Polish markings there. You've got seat belts as well as decals, that's nice. So it's all there, isn't it? You've got your instruments here. I'm just trying to get it in the light. The light's been very awkward today. There we go. Yeah, and quite a few, uh, quite a few, but not too many stencils. Many of the trestle information, isn't it, really? I'm a hurry. Oh, I'm right, actually. Hey, I got it right. And I did guess, it actually says, in tiny, tiny writing, I can get you to... It says, uh, printed by Tech Mod, it says, right at the bottom, in the teeniest writing you've ever seen. I guess right. I mean, it's logical, isn't it, for them? Techno being in Poland. Now we've also got uh, not not very great to see on camera. I realise, but we've got a nice a nice mask set here. So that's for everything, including the wheels. I think yes, the wheels and canopy, tail wheels, all there. It's all there. That's good. So unfortunately, my camera is having real trouble struggling to uh, focus on that. Just going to uh, get a little bit more light. There we go, that might help. <clears throat> and then we're into the instructions, so let's have a look. So we've got a little bit of a sprue map at the beginning. And then we have got a paint guide. And I quite like the way that uh, Armour do this. They offer you the options of Hataka, AK, Life Colour, Ammo, Humbro, Vallejo or Tamiya. Which I think covers most of the ones we're likely to use. So that's that's pretty good. And then it goes straight into the build, so let's have a look. So you've got A version or B version. Uh, a version carrying drop tanks. Uh, or are they paper mache tanks? They may not be drop tanks as such, but... Um, auxiliary tanks only used on paint option 1. And on paint option 2 you've got some bombs. So you've got a couple of holes to open up there. Just to prepare for the different types of pylon, because one's a bit bigger I think than the other. Then we've got the uh, internal structure of the, the gear bay uh, area and it looks like it's quite detailed. You've got what looks like, um, I think it's an oxygen, it's an oxygen tank or a hydrogen tank that, that powers the uh, undercarriage. Uh, so you're building that up and it's quite a, quite a detailed bit of building work to be done here. It's some proper 
uh, intricate detail on the walls of that of that bay. Then we start with our seat, uh, and you've got your um, it looks like a trim controller. The one on the right. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember my cockpits for Spitfires and Hurricanes. And then you've got your decal going in on, and you've got the uh, seat having its decal uh, seat belts. You've got your armour plate going in behind there. And then it says here, a new hole in the new position. Uh, some little, a little bit of filling to do, it looks like, here. Then you're putting in your gear bay door we just discussed. And you're bringing the top and bottom, which are all one piece, of the wings down together. And then inserting your lights, landing lights. Uh, and then we have got um, the floor being built up basically here for the, the don't forget the hurricane like the typhoon has got this very like a uh, almost like scaffolding style of uh, internal construction of the cockpit so you're going to build that from the ground up basically uh, putting in your rudder pedals um, doing wood effect on the little uh, trim wheels uh, brass it's, it's good it's good though it's giving you the hints about the colors of certain parts that are critical you don't get that with uh, border model, do you? For example, you don't get anything from them. It's just, just everything's going to end up grey if you take them literally at their word. Then we've got some uh, actuator rods going in and strengthening rods in the bay, and then we start our instrumentation panel, which of course is a decal for the instruments themselves. And there's also the compass to go in there, uh, and then you've got various uh, side panel parts to go in, including the throttles and uh, the undercarriage levers etc. Uh, remove vents. Remove... Uh, obviously there's going to be different versions because there's one or two things they're asking you to remove here. Uh, and then you're going to bring, ultimately bring your fuselage uh, which has now got its uh, cockpit all together and bring that uh, fuselage down on top of that cockpit stroke wing assembly. Then we're on to the radiators. Uh, so you've got your main radiator, killing radiator underneath, um, and you've got your uh, the lower fuselage section, so that's going in to avoid a seam, so that's a good idea. Avoids any problems with join lines down the middle. Uh, then we've got our elevators uh, and the tailplane, and the vertical uh, stabiliser with the rudder going in here. And then you've got your tail wheel, and again it's telling you how to paint them up, which is really helpful. And it tells you which masks to use on your main gear there. Then we're actually putting the main le uh, gear legs in, complete with attaching the wheels and tyres and the bay doors. And then we have got uh, an option here, t -t 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 depending which version you're using. It, it seems to have a different uh, additional light, it would seem. And then we're putting in our gun sight. Is it the Mark III gun sight? I think it is. And then we get to the meat and potatoes with your cannons. So we'll, we'll get into this when we look at the plastic, but of course we've got um, resin special options in this kit, straight from Armour themselves. So we've got their own resin option kits. We've got uh, IFF aerials, we've got the little pop out stirrup ladder uh, step, we've got the oil cooler intake, air intake. Sorry, air intake, I should say. Uh, and then we've got, yeah, it's, it's coming along quite fast, this build, isn't it? So then we've got our, there's two different options for a, a more pointy spinner, I think, and a slightly blunter styled one. I think the pointy one, we'll see, is the, I think it's the Night Fighter version. Yes, it is. And then we've got um, the strakes here, which are interesting, just down here. Now this is for the night fighter only because these are to eliminate the flash glare of the flash from the exhausts at night. They, they look incredibly bright and blind the pilot so these are like a shroud. A uh, very simple just a piece of aluminium I presume on the real aircraft just to, to cover up the exhaust so that it doesn't shine straight in his face. Uh, we've also got the exhaust themselves going on there and of course again we've got these optional uh, armour provided rather nice looking uh, resin ones. And then you've got your options for your uh, open, I think, or closed on your canopy, sliding canopy. Because of the hurricane, it's quite a simple affair, really. 
you will need to um, consider get your masks in it, you know, make, make sure you position the masks really carefully, that's quite important. And then we get onto the, either the drop tanks, sorry, I glossed over it then, there's these aerials to go on as well, you want to put some aerials in, IFF, IFF aerials. Um, it's one of those things that's kind of optional, depends on how advanced a modeler you are. If you're not that advanced, you can be lazy like I was on my my, uh, my Teleri one and don't bother, but I think if I build this I will bother, because I've now got into using the easy line and yeah, and once you've had a bit of practice, it's not too difficult, really. A bit of super glue, some tweezers and some patience. You'll make a lovely job of it. And then we've got, ultimately, the options, two options, either bombs or drop tanks. And then we've got, the, that's it, then we've got the uh, the colour call out. So we've got the night fighter version, with our Polish friend Ace flying that. Uh, dirty orange, dirty orange coloured uh, exhaust. You know what that's for? That's for when they are on the ground handling. They want to see the exhaust, especially when they land and the exhaust is still red hot but it's the middle of the night and they can't, they might be climbing up on it and they don't see and put their hand on it or something. That would be the reason for that. It's not very high vis from a distance but close up you can see it really easy. Um, yeah and then you've got, um, basically it's kind of black really. Of course you won't go with a, you wouldn't want to paint this as a night fighter with a a true sort of matte black. You want to go for something that's a little bit... I mean, I'm thinking of rubber black would be a good starting point for that colour because it's got that hint of blue in it and these, these aircraft, these night fighters, were never truly black. They were always like a dirty, oily black and they, they weathered very quickly, these black planes as well. So you can do some weathering, you can do some perhaps some pre-shading and try and create some different effects depending on where on the aircraft you're working. It's like a blank canvas, you could do a lot with that actually in terms of uh, black painting. Anyway, the next option of course is the is the day uh, ground attack version. And this is the one that's based at Tangmere. Uh, Stanford Tuck isn't it? I'm pretty sure he was at Tangmere. Um, so yeah, that's Stanford Tuck's aircraft where it's got much more conventional daylight colours on it. So it's like um, sky underneath, sky stroke duck egg blue. But I think it's duck egg blue rather than sky. Am I right? Mm, no, I think it's sky. I think that'll be Tamiya sky. That, that's the colour anyway. And then finally, we've got the. Um, this, this is a sort of. Uh, this is July '44, and you can see how the schemes have changed. Now gone to this. Um, it's like um, I'm trying to remember the exact colour. It's like a sea grey. Um, is it light sea grey? I think it might be light sea grey, dark sea grey, and probably uh, olive green or ref dark green. Uh, and you can see that's very much the style that they went to to the end of the war. The Typhoons and Tempests were all painted the same colour. Very, very good. Now there was an addition which I, um, I sort of skipped over. Let's just have a look at this. Uh, it looks like there's an error. For better fit, remove the red part marked part of the stringers from the inner side of the wing. Stringers from the inner side of the wing. Okay. So it's basically saying that there's a ridge here and you want to cut that out to get your light housing to fit, it, fit in a little bit cleaner. Yeah. And then it shows it, on the, it shows it from the other angle as well. That's, that's nice and clear, isn't it? Nice and clear. And then it says, uh, with closed canopy, remove the rails marked in red. Yeah, okay. Because it, effectively it's, it's, it's part of the canopy, isn't it? So in the canopy, when you use the open version, um, you, you want to see the rails and obviously that probably gets in the way of closing the canopy properly when you use the closed version. But it's nice that Armour have gone to the trouble to, you know, to give us that, uh, you know, they're, they're thoughtful enough that they've spotted small issues, probably when they've been doing test building themselves. And this is what we get, we, we want, I mean, that's very professional, isn't it? We don't get that from a lot of the others. I know I'm going to start my rant again about instructions. I've just had an issue on the TACOM. I'm not going to go into the details now, but I'll talk about it when I do the after bill review. But I've just discovered a major flaw in the instructions. A really stupid one as well. Almost kinetic-like. Only one so far, thank God. But just something where they haven't thought about what they're doing and showed a photo a diagram that's very, very misleading. We'll come to that later. Our friends at Armour here, they seem to have uh, thought this through and thought, ah, we need to tell the customer about that. And they duly did, so thank you very much, Armour. 
that's a very professional way to uh, to overcome your problems. So now, let us finally, I've been waiting for this most of the year, because it was announced at New Year, so wasn't it? Let's get into the plastic. So we've got a nice resealable bag, which is always good. Now I know what some of you are going to shout and say, you're going to build this one, Peter. And do you know, the honest answer is I think I almost certainly will build this. I can't promise when, but I, I think I will, because it will go perfectly with my other 48 scale RAF planes I've got. And I'm not that happy with this uh, existing hurricane. And this would sit, I think, a lot better with my Spitfires and Mosquitoes. Uh, and Thunderbolts. American Thunderbolt as well. All right, stick that over there. Let's have a look. Now, first of all, we can do an immediate comparison. We've got our little bag. These are not standard in the kit, folks, so be aware. This is the resin extras from Armour. Hispano cannons, 20mm cannons. And resin exhaust, which look wonderful at this distance. But we'll get into it properly in a second. So, why don't we start by actually as we've got, we've got the first sprayer out, oh, it's very exquisite. I think you're going to like this. Let's move that. Move that to the other way. Oh, now then. Now, I just want to say as well, by the way, that many others I've already seen have started popping up doing reviews of this kit, which is fair enough. Um, I have genuinely avoided all other reviews on this kit. I haven't seen a single one. Even the well-known ones um, I've avoided because I just wanted to see it with a completely open mind and with my own fresh eyes and not have been guided by somebody else's opinion. And I think when there's a lot, a lot of us reviewing a new kit like this, I think that's the best thing you should do, really. So let's have a look and see what I think. See what you think, more to the point. Let's have a look for starters of the detail on these wings. We'll come to the cannons in a second. I mean, I've got to say that... Uh, that is just exquisite really you know you've got all the rivets you feel the rivets here you can feel the the raised rivets you've got recessed panel lines that feels beautifully done that really really does and they've got it very very fine you know so um you can see that you've got the cannon bulges there where the cannon is 20 millimeter cannons sort of stick up a little bit uh, bulge in the upper wing and then on the other side we've got quite a nice this is this is the underside now so obviously we haven't got the browning guns we've only got the uh, the ejection chutes for the 20 millimeter cannon and clearly some very very nice work look at all the little uh, little tabs where the uh, here on the flaps See the little tabs where the connectors for the control rods for the flaps are. That's really well done. That's an absolutely stunning bit of moulding and it feels incredible. Uh, I'm just... My only concern would be that it's... Uh, if you put a lot of layers of paint on, they may build quite a lot. They feel quite pronounced, these uh, raised rivets do. But uh, to the eye, it's just total candy that, and there's not a bit of flash on it. I know there is on the, the sprue, but don't worry about that. Um, and then on the inside, oh, okay, this is interesting. Oh, okay, so they've gone and yeah, they've got some very major heavy ejector pin systems here. And this is um, obviously this is one of the areas where they were talking about uh, here, where they were saying that if you're going to put this um, is it here or here, here, they were saying you need to remove these little bits of rail to, to get a good fit for your lights. But uh, this is quite a, an unusual solution. They've got really huge ejector pins. And they've got like a, um, like a prong all the way around the outside. This is obviously a, a new bit of moulding sort of technology or a new style anyway. Come back a bit, you'll see it a bit more. You can see it there, can't you? Look at that. Isn't that bizarre? But there's good detail on the inside, um, especially when you might see through to the f from the floor. And then you've got your, obviously, your gear. Is it, is it my imagination or...? <laughs> I'm sure it is my imagination, but the, to me the gear, the gear door recess, the bays, the open door area looks a bit small to me because the Hurricane's got a pretty mighty undercarriage, you've got to say. I'm going to compare it with my, my other kit here, see if it looks the same. No, I think it's me. I'm just, uh, just 
looking at the uh, sort of dimensions of it. It looks small, perhaps it's because it's un unpainted. There's not much in it. There's not much in it. Looks about the same, in fairness. Um, and then you've obviously got your area for your radiator in Turkey. But isn't it beautiful? And the finish is absolutely so crisp. Um, only disappointment, I would say, is if we go back to the tell area that I was criticising, here it is. Look, you've got ailerons, separate ailerons, movable ailerons on this. Yeah, you can clearly move your ailerons here. But not on the new armour, which I'm a little bit surprised about that, perhaps. <clears throat> Whether I would mark it down, I think probably not. But, hmm, no flaps, no movable flaps, control surfaces, and no ailerons. Um, which is odd. Which is odd. I would have thought they'd have done that. But anyway, we move on. Now we need to look at these cannons. So, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Let's have a proper look at these cannons. So this is the kit provided cannons. I've got to say, they're pretty nice. They're not, they're not poor on any level. Now let's have a look at the resin ones and see if we've really if we've gained anything with the resin. Be very careful with this. Okay, I think these are 3D printed resin, aren't they? So I'm not sure how much the camera is going to get. It's one of those colours that the camera doesn't really like. Um, so I'm not quite clear how well this is picking up on the camera. But I can tell you that they are very fine. Yeah. And, we've, and they've actually provided you with, uh, with eight. So there's, two, there's, two, there's basically a spare set. So those are nice, aren't they? It's a, it's a terrible colour to, to, of resin, I mean. Um, my eye, even my glasses, is really struggling to pick up the... I can see it now, OK. With, with the, yeah, if we get the background just right, you can pick up on some of the finer detail. Which is not 100% apparent, actually even to the naked eye. It's just such a terrible colour to actually get your eye to focus on. Are they better? Are they better? Well... Yeah, I think they are. They are better. The dimensions look slightly different to me. Uh, maybe not. Can I get that on camera for you? Sorry. It's very difficult this one. It's a tricky little thing to show you. Um, I think you just have to take my word for it because it may be that when, you, when I see this later I'll think, oh, I can see it better on the camera. But it wasn't 100% clear, um, thanks mainly to the colour of it. So, sorry, I'll bring you out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's that and then there's the resin uh, exhaust stubs and we're going to have a good look at them and I think we can be guaranteed that they'll be something quite special. I say these are these are options from Armour. It can come in the box all together as part, almost like it's part of the kit, but it's not standard in the normal kit. So just be aware. So if I can try again, it's a horrible colour. This it's just the colour of the resin. Once it's painted, I'm sure it'd be great. But we've got oh, exhaust. Tricky again. The focus isn't focus is struggling a wee bit. Hold it like that; it might help. It's just a really, really tricky thing to. Ah, now we're getting some detail. Okay, it's very, very nice. I can tell you when you look at it as per the outside view, exterior sort of side-on view. It's just the contrast against the background because it's such a weird colour. Not a photogenic colour of resin at all. But let's just compare that with the actual part on the kit, which we haven't got to yet. If I can find it. Here they are. So, right. Oops. Now then. This is going to be rather hard, I think. <laughs> Again. So. Can we see? Again, the grey plastic is a lot easier for the camera to pick up the detail on as against the resin. But I can say to you honestly that it's just things like the edges are a bit finer. As you'd expect, the resin is just a bit sharper. 
um, which is really hard to tell. Anyway, we'll move on from that because it's just a, an issue around the resin colour that's making it really hard to photograph and even hard to see, even with my glasses. So here is the main sprue with the fuselage on. What have we got then? Well, it's superb. <laughs> Look at this. You've got all the, cam the sort of canvas um, framework texture, the canvas over framework that you get on the Hurricane. Uh, and you can see that it's, it's like a doped canvas, isn't it? And then you've got the aluminium aircraft here, part of the fuselage. Um, this, is the, well, this is that little grill that it says you've got to remove. Look at the panel detail. Um, it's almost like a it's almost like a stressed skin effect which they reproduce very very well, I've got to say. And then you've got the, the all the cowling panels. Yeah, and I can tell straight away it's a completely different shape to my uh, <laughs> to my rather Spitfire looking matchbox version. That looks really really sharp. It looks very very accurate to my eye. Interesting, what's that? Yeah. And then you've got your pylons for, and then this is your uh, uh, tropical filter, air filter. And you've got your lower, again with the stress skin effect, you've got your lower rear fuselage. And then over here, slightly moved on the sprue, whoops, coming off the sprue, we've got the two options for the two styles of spinner. The slightly more rounded one, the slightly more pointed version. Now, there's not a lot in it, slightly more pointed version on the left. Again, it's hard to see in this angle on the sprue, but it's just a little bit longer. You see it there now? No, it's in the right position. It's just a whisker longer. And then we've got our little bomblets. Well, they're bombs. I don't know. 250 pound bombs, I think. Um, although I don't think, I'm not sure those are the versions for this particular plane. Are they? Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, and then we've got a very, very beautiful propeller which looks absolutely superb that does that's nice and the back plates I mean again I've got to be fair that the actual standard parts on things like the exhaust are not bad it's not night and day with the resin the resin is just a little bit finer and then you've got your drop tanks uh, here and we've got our tail wheel there and the intake for the oil radiator uh, and, the, and the engine radiator as well Cooling radiator. Um, it's got that lovely plastic to it, hasn't it? It's got that really finessed feel. Um, so you've got the end of the drive shaft here from the engine, uh, crankshaft, I should say, and on this side, yeah. Interesting. Again, we've got that little grill which they're telling you you need to remove. Some supremely fine details, I'd say there. Really, really nice. So that's that one. Beautiful sprue. Have you noticed this thing that Armour do, where they have very clever this actually? They've got these, um, they've got these little holes, and they can. And what they do is they into into like, like sockets, and it's so that you can stop any movement in travel because they've only got this one bag, and I thought, oh, I hate that, you know. But it's not a problem with Armour because they have this design of sprue whereby. I'll just demonstrate it, he says. I'm not doing a very good job off, to be honest. Well, that's the right way around. Is it that way or that way? What they basically do is they inter interlock. And what that enables them to do is... I've definitely got this the wrong way around, haven't I? I'm losing the plot here. They basically they lock into each other, which means that it doesn't move around the same and it's in transport. Uh, in transit, I should say, uh, and it also means they can probably stack them in the factory in a smaller space as well. But a digress. So that's, that's that one. We're now on to this is the one that's got our rudder and our elevators and all the, the really detailed parts. Here we go. So here's your elevators. 
and they're like in one piece which is really nice they've got the, the trim tabs on them as well there is what looks like an ejector pin right in the middle of them which I'm a little bit disappointed about can you see that a couple of ejector pins on the underside ouch that's, they are tiny just here and here I think I'm right in saying that's an ejector pin get it in the light you see it yeah that, I don't think that should be there um, but it doesn't seem to be a comp problem on the other part, so that's a bit strange really. But anyway, here is the, uh, the horizontal tailplane. Look at that, isn't that beautifully done? So it's like in a one piece, so it's really solid and firm. And you've got the top section there. You've got your rudder over here. Take that one, it's probably easier. And again, that's one piece. Complete with the aerial on top. Um, and again, they've got this system of having these ejector pins and then these little like nodules, see them? Where it's obviously part of their sort of system for ejector pin design uh, to help push against it. And you, you get that on quite a lot of the parts, which is quite <laughs> slightly off-putting. I hope this doesn't actually interact with anything else. Um, but you might want to be aware of it in case you do need to actually cut any of these off. And then we've got our uh, we've got weight on wheels. Don't look overly flat in the way they've done it, but you've got your weight on wheels here, and that's beautifully formed those uh, those wheels, you know, with the openings of the spokes. Very very nice. And it's yeah, it's got there's a quality to that. There really is. It's I mean, it, it's kind of an upscale version of the seventy second scale kit, I think. You got your framework here for your cockpit, which is very nicely done. And some, the moulding is very like ICM, very fine, very detailed, uh, and we end up with a very solid sprue there. There's no flexing of this sprue, it's really rigid. It's quite a hard plastic actually, a little bit almost Tamiya-like plastic. It's one way to describe it, I think. We've got the seat over here, look. Pilot seat. Instrument panel. Uh, obviously we've got the uh, the gear doors here and here, and you've got your this is your armour plating behind the pilot seat. Definitely need that. And then you've got a tremendous amount of uh, this is some of the internal gubbins in the cockpit for the trim wheel and things uh, pulleys. You've got your your yoke stroke stick control stick there with a machine gun button on it. It's very small. <laughs> it's tiny, isn't it? But they've they've got a finesse to these parts where they really have managed to you know create something in 48, which almost so good the moulding. You can imagine they could just increase that. Press a few buttons on the computer and make it 30 second scale and it would still look good, do you know what I mean? That is really very impressive and then obviously over here you've got this um, the, some of the bulkhead parts of the the gear bay and then you've got bits of the of the radiator uh, radiators here and part of the tail there, tail vertical stabiliser and then finally you've got the, um, this is the gear bay here, the shaped like a bridge, obviously you've seen it at a slightly odd angle, there it is. It's really, really nice, got to say, it's, uh, yes, it's living up to expectations, and look at the fineness of some of these parts. Some absolutely tiny components here. And there's not a hint of flaws or flash or short shots or anything like that whatsoever. Very, very impressive, I'd say. Mm. I think it's been worth the wait, don't you, to be honest. Uh, it just seemed to be a month or two later than I think most of us thought it would be. Never mind. Soon forget that, won't we, when we're building it. Yeah, I do fancy building this. I do fancy having a nice hurricane. But there hasn't been one really, I don't think. That's, um, I, mean, I was disappointed with that Italian one. When I built it, I had a lot of issues and it was just a bit of a pain. Not what I was expecting, really. Now then, finally, the clear parts. 
what do we think of these? Try and get it a bit closer. Um, I've got to say, they are very, very good. There's maybe the tiniest bit of distortion in that far one. Can you see it? The, as you're looking at it, the right hand final window, it looks a little bit distorted, but I'm being awfully picky. I don't think I should be too, uh, too fussy. Those are nice. So I think this is the open and closed option. Um, the framing is a little bit different. If you look very carefully, the upper one has got much thicker framing. And the lower one, it's a bit finer. And then you've got your windscreen over here. I'm not sure if those two options are open and closed. I'm not sure. I think it is. Uh, and then you've got your... Or is it indeed another variant coming later? Not too clear on that. Um, and then you've got your... Uh, windscreen with your armoured um, bulletproof glass at the front and of course you've got those little covers for the lights and the landing lights and things. Very very nice. I was, I was thinking at first that it had the, the, the mirror because <laughs> they used to have a mirror in the Battle of Britain at the beginning but they got rid of them later didn't they? They decided that they were uh, perhaps a bit distracting uh, and I don't think they had the mirror later. First of all, they had a round mirror, then they had a square mirror, and I think they dropped it later altogether. Um, so that's very nice. So yes, there we have it, really. That's the kit. So what do I think? Um, I think the only disappointment, really, for me, is the lack of posable... Um, you can do it. I think you can do it with the elevators, but you can't pose the ailerons and the flaps, which I, I kind of hope for, so... Mm. I might have to knock it just half a point off for that. But other than that, obviously don't forget what this cost. Uh, I have p literally paid £38 for this. Everything you've just seen, £38. It's a lot of kit for the money. You know, some people are charging that for a 70 second scale kit. Think of that clear prop MiG-23. It was £50. Just, just shy of £50 for a 70 second scale kit. So suddenly this looks like the bargain of the century, quite frankly. Thus far, you know. So, yeah. Um, well, again, I'm still trying to figure out how they go together, but I know they do. They, they, they have a nice way of it sort of interlocking to make it as flat as possible in the bag as well. So, that is the armour Hurricane 2C that a lot of us have been waiting for for quite a long time. Plus extras, resin exhaust and resin cannons. What's the verdict then? What's the verdict? Nice decals, great instructions. Quite a novel design of uh, box with it, like a tray. Yeah, I quite like this design. It's quite innovative, isn't it? It's a tray and it slides in. I like that. It's quite cool. It's like that. It's interesting the way that people like ICM and Armour are coming up with new ideas instead of this Revel, because it's very like a Revel box, isn't it? Which I don't think any of us really like. But putting the tray in definitely improves that as a design concept, I think. So, on my Hurricane's back, and I shall give you my final verdict, which you can probably guess, to be honest. I'll bring my matchbox in there as well, have a little bit of a 2C party. <laughs> so then, I think, I think it's going to get 9.5 out of 10. I think the instructions are very, very good. There's some good detail in there. Tells you good backstory, um, good data. Um, did it give us the performance figures? Um, didn't give us a lot of, of data on the performance figures, did it? But it was kind of intermingled with the description. Adequate, though. Adequate. Um, I think the plastic is absolutely stunning, really. Uh, I think my only disappointment has just knocked it off. From getting, it could have got 10 out of 10, this. Just lost a bit because they haven't gone for poseable ailerons and, and cut off the flaps down. I don't see why not, because, you know, they've done a separate rudder, they've done separate elevators. How difficult would that have been? I'm a little bit puzzled by that. But I don't want to be negative because I think the plastic and the, the, when you build it up, the plastic quality is very, very high. It's got a beautiful feel to it. I think it'll take your primer, it'll take a wash. The details are so finessed, I think it'll really pop when you put a wash in it. So I think nine and a half out of 10 is where I'm at. Did you notice, by the way, that today, as it's a night fighter, I went for a suitably dark night fighter watch. <laughs> Nine and a half out of ten, well deserved. I think that's uh, one of the best kits of the year. 
uh, right up there with some of the other recent ones we've enjoyed looking at and uh, about time we had a decent hurricane. I'm sure there'll be more versions coming along very soon. I'll be coming along very soon with more interesting reviews for you to enjoy so don't forget in the meantime uh, if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe it costs you nothing uh, give us a like give us a thumbs up a 10 out of 10 thumbs up and don't forget to tune in and uh, ding the notification bell in fact because then you'll get early notification of the next video that is uploaded and uh, until then I just say thank you very much for joining me once again I'm just gonna have a quick final slurp of my drinky mmm Cheers to all of you, I hope you enjoyed the review and don't forget what I said, if you want to uh, maybe get your hands on some of those extras you'll need to go to Armour directly. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you very much for joining me and all your time. Please look after yourselves and until next time, thanks a lot and bye for now.